Hi guys, I'm Ben Dudai and welcome to another episode of Album Explorations. On today's episode, we will be looking at the latest release from German heavy metal legends Scorpions and their album with the equally charming and cringy title of Rock Believer. So, as uh, anyone who has followed the channel so far would know, I'm a huge fan of the Uli John Roth era of Scorpions, with their album In Trance um, being one of my all-time favorite albums. But um, of the post Uli era stuff, I'd probably say that Love Drive would be my favorite, with the great uh, Michael Schenker on the lead guitar alongside his brother and sometimes nemesis Rudolf. Um, of the Matthias Jabs era, I'd say Blackout is probably my favorite, but uh, Animal Magnetism is also great, uh, and I dig those albums as well. Um, perhaps, you know, well, definitely not as much as the Uli era stuff, but uh, it still kicks ass. Even though Love at First Thing is uh, a good album, for me, that's sort of where they really began to stray too far from what I loved about them in the first place. Really, um, from that point on, they really sort of lost me from, uh, you know, with the, I would say with the occasional exception now and then um, from, the, from the ensuing albums. Um, I also want to say that uh, unlike many fans of the more raw and hard edge Scorpions stuff, I'm really not a hater of Winds of Change. I know a lot of people hate that song for some reason, but I actually think it's a fantastic and well-written song. I've really always loved it, so just putting that out there. <laughs> anyway, so after a decades-long stretch of sub-par albums, uh, I really wasn't expecting anything from Rock Believer. Um, this being the first album, though, to feature drum legend Mickey D of uh, King Diamond and Motorhead renown, sort of gave me a, a, some reason to be interested in checking it out. Ironically though, the, the drum performance on Rock Believer is actually probably the least remarkable element on the album. Um, not saying it's bad, but it's just, you know, solid and dependable and, and that's sort of really it. There's nothing really flashy uh, like he's done in the past. However, the rest of the band all have their moments of plenty to shine. Um, this time, Klaus and Rudolf, um, you know, who wrote everything, really wanted to try to tap into their past glories, specifically trying to sort of recapture the magic from the Blackout era, for example. This is what we tried to achieve. There was a whole approach with this album because uh, one of our good friends, uh, and diehard fan from the early days said, guys, if you make a record like Blackout, you know, <laughs> yeah. then you then you hit it on the head, you know. This is what so many people, so many fans would expect from, from you. Right. And we say, okay, it's easy to say, it's 40 years ago, <laughs> come on, give me a break. Uh, so, but we took it like a challenge, you know. It has to be said that uh, Rudolf and Klaus really did a great job at achieving this goal and Rudolf's riffs are absolutely killer. Klaus is a, another singer like Glenn Hughes who seems to have drunk from the Fountain of Youth because his voice sounds as fantastic as ever and he delivers some of his strongest vocal melodies since Blackout in my opinion here. Bassist Pavel, uh, Pavel, I'm not going to try and pronounce his last name, uh, lays down some really fat, tasty lines over Mickey's solid as a rock drums. And Matthias Jabs is in top form, playing exciting and explosive solos throughout the album, all flavored with a killer guitar tone. Actually, that's another great feature of the album, the, the excellent production. Everything sounds pristine and clear, but, um, but, but while also like accentuating the power of the music itself. The album kicks off with the aptly titled Gas in the Tank, which these guys 
certainly still have by the sound of this album, which is a great hard rocker and with a great catchy chorus. Next is the weirdly titled Roots in My Boots, um, which has some of the Scorpions sort of obligatory English as a second language cringiness to it. But that's always been part of their charm and the song is cool nonetheless. Knock 'em Dead is a cool sort of love at first sting um, sort of style rocker. Then you get Rock Believer, the title track and one of the pre-release singles, which is a really cool sort of anthemic song about loving rock and hey, you know, I'm sure we can all relate to that sentiment. The song, uh, the song has uh, some cool changes and moves along, um, walking the line between like hard rock and pop, but really doing it successfully in my opinion. And you know, that's a hard line to walk. A lot of bands sort of, and, and the Scorpions have failed on trying to do that on numerous occasions, but when they, when they do it well, they have, you know, obviously made a lot of money out of that. The chorus definitely has lodged itself in my brain of uh, that song though, and it's, it's, it's a cracker. Next is one of my favorites on the album, Shining of Your Soul, with its slightly reggae vibe in the verse. It just has a killer melody, and I, lo I just love the, the vibe on this track. Absolutely kick ass. Then comes my other favorite track, the sort of China White like red hot killer track. The Seventh Sun, with its upfront, simple, stomping bass line and cool groove underneath, with those really cool guitar harmonics over the top, instantly sort of creating a very cool and, and definitely 80s vibe. But the song doesn't really rely on nostalgia. Um, you know, this thing is a, a legit kick ass song with power oozing all over it. I fucking love it. It's a killer song. Hot and Cold is a, another great hard rocker with a simple sort of shanker riff that propels the thing forward in a very infectious way. The next song, um, When I Lay My Bones to Rest, is a fine hard rock, uh, hard rocker by the numbers track, but it's not bad, but not quite as great as the tracks that preceded it. Then you've got Peacemaker, is another killer track and a single. And it's a ripping song full of youthful energy, which is really remarkable for a band with guys in their 70s. Um, it's another favorite of mine for sure. Then you got Call of the Wild, which is a uh, slower paced, slightly Zeppelin-esque number, which is quite different for the Scorps, but it's definitely a cool track and I dig it. Uh, finally, the album wraps up with the only ballad on the album, uh, when you know where you come from and it's a damn good one a really beautiful emotionally charged song with wonderful melody Scorpions have always had the, the knack for a great ballad and this one is definitely an, another one of their best so that brings us to the end of the standard release but the, the, the deluxe edition comes with another five songs and there's some really great material there too Shoot For Your Heart is another kick-ass rocker in the, in the Blackout tradition and could easily have been on the standard release. Um, it's really great. Uh, then you've got another great one, When Tomorrow Comes. Absolute killer. Uh, you know, and again, it could have easily been on the standard release instead of a couple of the others that were actually there. Um, even Unleash the Beast, which is the next track, could also easily have replaced a couple of the, the slightly weaker ones uh, on there. It's another kick-ass track and I, I really love it as well. Um, I can live without the country rock of the song Crossing Borders. That's really the only one that I uh, sort of felt was a bit meh, a bit meh. You know, like not terrible, not terrible, but um, you know, I'm not really into the whole country rock thing. So there's that. Um, and anyway, they finish off the bonus section with a, a purely acoustic version of the ballad from the the, um, the standard album, um, When You Know Where You Come From, which works beautifully just like it does on the album um, with this arrangement. 
perhaps even better. You know, the, it's it's the the guitar line, the 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 um the acoustic guitar passages are really pretty and and really elegant and classy, and the vocals shine through even more in this version, I think. So, um, but both are great, both great versions, and um, yeah. Absolutely great. So I, I would recommend if you're going to go and get this album to pick up the deluxe version if you can because uh, those are some great songs and you don't want to miss out on those. Anyway, Rock Believer really has been a very pleasant surprise for this Scorpions fan who has, you know, hasn't really liked much of their work since Blackout. And I'll go as far as to say I think this is their best album since Blackout. And yes, I like it more than Love at First Sting. Um, it's a fantastic achievement, um, you know, this deep in their epic career and I have to take my hat off to this legendary band for coming back so strong. Anyway, how would I rate this album? Well, the production sounds amazing, the songs are kick-ass for the most part, the performances are killer, especially Klaus's vocals and Matthias's solos, and I even like the um, McDonald's colored, uh, very classic 80s style Scorpions album cover that they have on this one. I like the, that bright red, it's really cool. With the yellow Scorpions on there, it looks nice. It makes me feel like having a happy meal. <laughs> um, is it their best album? No. But does it rock? Hell yes it does. So I'm gonna give this one a strong 8 out of 10. Anyway guys, that's it for today. Let me know in the comments what you think of Rock Believer. And if you like the video, throw me a like, hit that subscribe button for more great hard rock and heavy metal content. So from me, the Spotlight Kid, thanks for watching, stay metal, and see you next time.